All right, guys, so I was out practicing today and I started thinking about something. And I know what you're thinking. You see that U-turn box and you're like, all right, Rob, enough with the U-turns. We know, head and eyes, throttle, clutch, rear brake, blah, blah, blah. All right, but you know, it's, I don't wanna, it's not just about U-turns. I wanna talk to you guys about the leaning of the motorcycle and the fear of leaning the motorcycle. So those are the people that I want to talk to today. And what I what I want to address is, do I have to lean your motorcycle to make a U-turn within 27 feet? Or can I just make the U-turn just by going slow and turning the handlebars? All right, I know there's a lot of people that have fear of leaning the motorcycle. So, you know, my goal is to always make things as easy as possible for you guys. So that's what we're going to talk about today making u-turns and doing a bunch of different things without leaning this motorcycle let's do this hey guys welcome to the channel i want to first say happy memorial day acknowledge all of the veterans out there and i want you guys to know that your sacrifice your family sacrifice um, and I'm talking about the sacrifice of life. I'm talking about the sacrifice of time. And I don't care what capacity um, you're in, in the military. At the end of the day, you're always in harm's way because if the crap hits the fan and it's all hands on deck, it could be any one of you, okay? I definitely understand that. So thank you guys. We can do what we're doing out here and we have the freedom to do what we're doing out here based on your sacrifice. So again, thank you. Okay, to my preloaders, always nice to have you guys here with me. Welcome back. Always nice to have you guys here with me. All right, I have good news for all of you guys. All right, this is very good news. So, we have exclusivity now here on Robert Simmons Paying It Forward. So, if you're a preloader, that's outstanding, okay? And I'm always proud of you guys because you understand how important what we do here is. But what I want to introduce to you guys now is exclusivity, okay? It's a VIP part of this channel, all right? And it's called VI Preloaders. Okay, if you want to be a VI preloader, all you have to do is hit the join button that's right next to the subscribe button. Okay, and that's only going to be on a computer and on an Android phone or an Android device. If you have an iPhone, you have to actually go into Chrome to be able to see that join button. But there's also going to be a link in the description section here. And if you click on that, it'll take you right where you need to go. And if you become a VI preloader, you're going to have extra perks. And those perks include special emojis and badges that you can use in the comment section. Okay, the badge will be next to your name in the comment section and it's gonna be color-based and that's gonna be based on how long you've been a VI preloader. And of course the emojis, you can use that as well in the comment section. Um, and those emojis will grow as time goes on. Um, also, live videos. I'm gonna start doing live videos now. It's only gonna be available to my VI preloaders. Okay, and again, you can use those same badges and, and emojis on there as well. Uh, also guys, the practice sessions that I do out here, those are gonna be for VI preloaders only now. You have to be a VI preloader to come out here and practice with me. Me featuring you practicing on one of my videos, VI preloader perk, okay? So these are some of the things I'm gonna give to people that are actually paid subscribers. They're members of, the, of, the, uh, of my channel. And that fee is only $4.99 a month, guys. It's $4.99 a month. When you click on that join button, there's gonna be a list explaining what the perks are and um, a short video as well. Uh, so, and you, if you hear me say short video, take it with a grain of salt. No, I'm, I'm just kidding though, it is a short video. So take a look at that. And if you're interested in becoming a VI preloader, yeah, okay, you can come on that ride with me. I appreciate it, all right? It's gonna be a lot of fun. I wanna take this time to thank those that have subscribed already. It's very much appreciated. Now, for you guys that don't know who I am, you don't know what a preloader is, so you damn sure don't know what a VI preloader is, okay? Let me tell you who I am and what this channel is all about. My name's Robert, I'm a retired NYPD Highway Patrol motorcycle lieutenant. I did a wonderful 22 year career with the NYPD. 15 of those years were spent with the motorcycle unit.
The name of my channel is called Robert Simmons Paying It Forward. And on this channel, I share my knowledge, experience, and training that I received from the NYPD Highway Patrol Motorcycle Unit with you guys, with a special focus on slow speed motorcycle operation, because that's the aspect of riding a motorcycle that requires 100% of your skill to keep this motorcycle upright, 15 miles per hour or less, without having your feet out and without feeling unsure. I also want to help you be the boss of your motorcycle. And what that means is you will no longer be intimidated by this motorcycle at low speeds. You're going to be confident making right turns and left turns and U-turns. And that's what this is all about. So I'm going to say this again. I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. This channel is not about making you ride like a motorcycle cop. It's not about um, preparing you for the next police rodeo or, or a civilian rodeo. Now, there are riders that aspire to attain that skill. All right. And that's great. But I want you to know that's not the focus of this channel. Now, those riders still need to practice, too. And that's an, that's one of the main focuses on this channel, too. It's practice, 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 practice. Preload, keep it loaded and practice is so important. OK. All right. But what I want to talk to you guys about today, once again, leaning this motorcycle. That's what I want to talk to you guys about today. So I, I want you to understand that um, I understand that there are some motorcycle riders that are never, ever, ever. Not only are they never, ever going to make a U-turn within 18 feet or less, but they're not even thinking about it. They're not even interested in trying. And my response to them is no problem at all, because it's not necessary to make a U-turn in two parking spaces. It really isn't necessary. Is it a good skill to have? Yes. And I always say, yeah, once you learn how to do this, it's fun. Yes, it's fun to some of us, not to all of us. Because fear is real. It's a real thing. It's not something you can just turn off, right? And some people's fear, it gets to, it's at the point where it's almost crippling, okay? So I'm talking, I want to talk to you guys, not just you in particular, but what I'm talking about today, I want you guys to pay attention to what I'm saying. So what I am going to talk to you about today is I want you to know that when I do my practice sessions, that's why it's always 27 feet wide. Now, you should be able to make a U-turn in 27 feet. 15, 16, 17, 18 feet? No, not so much. Because that requires full lock and handlebars. It requires a excessive lean. And if, if, if you're not at that level, you're never going to do that. And I'm here to tell you, that's fine. What I don't want you guys to do is I don't want you to look at 27 feet and go, Too I, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Okay. Now, I want to talk to you about duck walkers. You guys know, and if you don't know, you're going to hear it from me today. This channel is all about positivity, building people up, helping people out. That's what this channel is all about. So if you drop your motorcycle, if you watch this channel regularly, you'll always see my reaction to that. It's going to happen, so it's not a big deal. All right. It's nothing for you to be embarrassed about. You're out here practicing. You're trying to better yourself to increase the odds on not dropping the motorcycle out in the real world. This is a controlled environment, so that's fine, okay? But when I, I'm, I say all of this to say, if you hear me use the term duck walkers, it is never, ever in a negative way. It's not making fun of anybody. It's not putting anybody down. It's not trying to make anybody feel less than. Again, not what this channel is about, not what I'm about, but that's just a term that's used for people that walk, that, their feet on their motorcycle while it's moving. So I want to address you guys and I want to let you know that if you see a 27 foot or close to that U-turn and you want to make that U-turn, I have great news for you guys. You ready for this? Let me get close to the camera. You don't have to lean your motorcycle to make a 27 foot U-turn or less. Okay. You do not have to lean the motorcycle. And that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. So I'm talking to people that have motorcycles that are very low to the ground and maybe they don't have the air ride, the air suspension, so they can't raise. It stays low. So the thought of them leaning their motorcycle is not going to happen whether they know how to do it or not. Um, but that's far and few between. The majority, of, the majority is our people, our riders, that just, they, they're uneasy leaning the motorcycle. And again, I'm talking about at slow speeds because clearly when you're going faster, you know, I, I, I read comments and, and, and hear people say all the time, oh, I scraped my boards today. And they're talking about when they're going 30, 40 miles per hour. 
That's a totally different feeling because remember, the faster the motorcycle goes, you're not the boss at that point. The motorcycle is kind of, it doesn't really need you, all right? So, but when you're going slow and you scrape the boards, yeah, it's, it's different. But again, not necessary, all right? That's what we're gonna talk about today. All right, guys, so if you watch my videos and you watch my practice sessions, you know that we always start with exercise numbers one, two, three, and four. And I often say in those four exercises, you don't have to lean the motorcycle in any of those exercises. And for those of you that don't know what those exercises are, exercise number one is stopping and starting. So you're going straight, clearly you don't have to lean the motorcycle. Exercise number two is the slow ride. It's, that slow ride is so important. And that's simply staying in the friction zone, using that rear brake and just riding slow, right? Exercise number three is trust and believe. Trust and believe is with your left foot on the ground, preloaded, covering the rear brake, and also ensuring that that motorcycle is in first gear before you do anything else. That's always step number one. While you're preloaded, while that rear brake's covered, picking up your left foot without the motorcycle moving, and when you feel it start to fall, let the clutch out, okay? And then lastly, exercise number four, which everybody loves, is right turns and left turns from a stop. So you don't have to lean in any of those, all right? And that's why I want you guys to focus on that and refer to that as you hear what I'm saying to you today. Okay, so exercise number two is probably the most relevant in regards to what I'm talking about here today. Because in exercise number two, we're going slow. We understand that as long as we have power going to the rear wheel, we're fine, right? So if we're going slow, we're covering that rear brake. As soon as we feel like, uh-oh, we're already preloaded, right? So all we're gonna do is let the clutch out a little bit. Now, I always say everybody's different. There's more than one way to do everything. I'm always trying to show you the most simplest way. So I tell you to preload your throttle, 15, 1800, you know, depending on your motorcycle. You, you don't wanna be an idle. Um, you have your clutch in the friction zone, okay? And you have it in the friction zone, meaning the motorcycle should be moving if you don't have your foot on the rear brake. But you're gonna be covering that rear brake, so you're controlling your speed with the rear brake. Now, you can use the rear brake and the clutch if you want to, but if you're trying to simplify this where you don't have to worry about two things at once, just worry about the rear brake, okay? And the main focus is keeping the motorcycle up at a slow speed, right? That's what you're doing. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm making sure I'm in first gear, covering the rear brake, reload, keep it loaded, and I'm off. My engine is the same, you hear it? I'm using my rear brake to control my speed. That's exercise number two, right? And the more you practice that, the more you'll get better at it, okay? You just want to have a relatively good skill in this area so that you can keep your motorcycle going slow without putting your foot down. That's the main thing. I don't care if the handlebars are going like this. You know, that's fine. That's why you practice here. Now, if you're out there in the real world, you can still do this. You have the confines of one lane, which is wide enough, but you know, you don't want to do it to the extreme. Okay. Again, this is not something that's really dangerous, but we all have different levels of skill. So you know where you are, or at least you should know where you are. Remember, we leave the ego at home. All right. You have to be honest with yourself. Okay. So once we get that skill down, here's what, we heard, here's what we learned. Let me back up here. We learned that as soon as the motorcycle starts to move, we pick up our left foot. That's exercise number one. That's why we do that first. It's so important because it's relevant. As soon as the motorcycle starts to move, you preload, you keep it loaded, you slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. As soon as your motorcycle starts to move, pick up your foot. As soon as. So there's no delay. If a motorcycle's moving and you're keeping your foot on the ground and you're trying to hold it on the ground as long as you possibly can until your heel almost hits your saddlebag, if you have those. No, as soon as it starts to move. So how do you make yourself feel comfortable with that? Just move forward in increments. Exercise number one. Reload, keep it loaded. Let the clutch out slowly. Feel it starting to move, pick up your foot. And now you're in exercise number two, right? And then stop. And then do it again. Reload, keep it loaded, slowly release the clutch. Now here's what I'll say as well. 
when you're slowly releasing the clutch, make sure you're not still applying a lot of pressure to the rear brake because then the motorcycle is not going to move. So you're covering the rear brake. Remember, covering it doesn't mean you're applying pressure. You apply the pressure when you need it. And as you practice more, you're going to know when you need it. If you feel like you're going too fast, what do you need? You either need to open up the clutch a little bit or I'm sorry, you either need to close the clutch a little bit to take power away from the rear wheel, or you need to apply rear brake. Remember, taking power away from the rear wheel just kind of slows you down a little, and that's, a lot of the time, that's all you're gonna need. But if you need to slow down faster, you need to use the rear brake, okay? All right, so make sure, you know, you're not, remember, you have to actually, at least on my motorcycle, unless your brake pedal is very sensitive, you have to actually press it down to apply pressure and you can tell that by your brake light see when your brake light comes on and you'll know whether your brake is engaged so slowly release the clutch into the friction zone you're already preloaded see i feel it moving pick my foot up and as soon as i pick my foot up i might want to either open up my clutch hand a little bit more so i can get a little bit more power or apply less brake or both this is what i mean when i say Depending on the situation is going to determine what you do. But if you want to simplify things, what I'll say is open up your clutch. You're, you're, let, you're letting off that rear brake. Okay. And as soon as you pick up your foot, open the clutch a little bit more into the friction zone. Don't worry about going too fast because you're always on that rear brake. That's going to correct you. You can always recorrect the clutch if you have too much clutch engaged. So let's do that again. Preload. Keep it loaded. Slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. As soon as I feel it moving, foot up. Exercise number two. All right, and now I'm just doing this. All right. So now that we got that down, that always comes into play in exercise number four, left turns and right turns from a standstill. But I'm not gonna go over that now because I've gone over that before. That's not to say I won't go over it again, but I wanna stay focused here. I'm talking about this U-turn. So, if we can do exercise number two, where we're going nice and slow, right? And remember, I tell you, this also applies to exercise number four. The only difference between exercise number two and exercise number four is, see how I started moving and I said, now we're in exercise number two? If I turn my handlebars, now we're in exercise number four. Nothing else changes, right? You keep your throttle where it is, you keep your clutch where it is, your foot's covering that rear brake. The only difference is head and eyes, handlebars, you're turning. Everything else stays the same. So shouldn't we be able to make a U-turn that same way? Let's give it a try. So here I am coming into the U-turn. Head and eyes. Exercise number two with the handlebar turn, right? Nope, I don't have to put any feet down, right? We can keep going. All right, listen to my engine. It stays the same. I don't have a full lock. I'm not lean, but I'm making a U-turn, right? I don't have to put my feet down. So you see my point, right? It's important to me that you guys master exercise number two. Practice exercise number two. If you practice exercise number two, where you can make this motorcycle go nice and slow, you're in control, keep your throttle where it is, keep your clutch where it is, and just let the rear brake control how fast you move, right? Anytime you feel like, uh-oh, all you have to do is let your foot off the rear brake, all right? Or open up your clutch hand a little, whatever you wanna do to give yourself more power, and you're gonna be fine, right? If you master that, now you don't have to worry about, I wish I could make a U-turn this tight, but I don't want to lean my motorcycle. You don't have to lean your motorcycle to make a U-turn. And did you see the dimensions in which I made the U-turn, right? Now, again, this is 27 feet. I was well within that. And like I always say, out there in the real world, the majority of the U-turns that, that you have to make are not going to be 18 feet or less, all right? They're going to be much wider than that. They might even be wider than this, okay? But I also want you to realize that the more you practice this, you know, other stuff starts to come into play too. You know, once your confidence goes up in one area, it, 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 it makes it easier for you to, to say, oh, you know what, let me try this now. So do me a favor, guys, I want you to try that. Practice exercise number two, practice going slow, and just 
turn the handlebars, right? Even if you just do circles, right? Just use lines in the parking lot. You don't even need cones, right? Because all I did was put some cones on the lines, right? So let me show you one more thing too. I wanna show you uh, as I'm making the U-turn, without leaning, without putting my feet down, that what if I get an uh-oh moment? How's that gonna look? Because remember, as you're making this U-turn, this is not a competition. If something happens where you, you have to give yourself a little more speed, and in so doing, you have to straighten out your handlebars, like slightly, quickly, you're still fine, right? There's plenty of room. <laughs> so if I pull into here, head and eyes, I'm making a U-turn, all of a sudden I gotta straighten out a little, still good, right? Still good. Because as soon as I felt that, uh-oh, we do that again. Head and eyes. As soon as I felt that, uh-oh, rear brake. Uh-oh, rear brake, rear brake. Right? That's it. Rear brake, rear brake. I'm exaggerating it, but I just want you to see. Rear brake. Now, I want you to also notice... I want you to also notice my speed. Remember, speed is not your friend. So we're not gonna do this fast because speed is just gonna take away space. If you have the space to give, no problem. So let's do it a little fast to see what that looks like. Now, guess what else speed does? Speed also makes me have to lean if I wanna keep it within the confines of three parking spaces. But it's a very slight lean. And some people with that little bit of speed, now they feel comfortable leaning, so they're okay. But if there's a curb over there or there's a car or there's a wall, they're gonna think, you're probably gonna think totally differently about making that turn at that speed, unless you know for sure you can make it, okay? So that's why I say, why even take the risk? Why worry about it if you don't have to? Exercise number two with a turn. Coming nice and slow. Let me turn, I wanna see how fast I'm going. Four miles an hour, nice and easy. Rear brake, rear brake, rear brake. And when I'm, when I'm right here, I'm good. Let it out, right? Let's do that again. Once I know I've made the turn, I can get out of the rear brake. Head and eyes, rear brake, rear brake, rear brake, right here, I see, I'm good. I can let the rear brake go, I'm good. Right? And guys, I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you that exercise number two, exercise number two is going to eliminate you ever duck walking your motorcycle ever again. Ever. Because there's never gonna be a reason to. I tell the guys that come out here all the time, the preloaders, I don't care if, you have, if you're going from this line to that line. Never a reason to do this. It's just not, all right? It's a motor run, this thing. Let it do the work. You preload and you keep it loaded. That's exercise number one. Before everything you do, slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. As soon as you feel the motorcycle starts to move, and of course that means your foot's not gonna be jamming the rear brake, pick up your left foot as soon, and bam, you're already into it. It's immediate. You see what I'm saying? That's what I mean when I say you don't need a lot of power to the rear wheel to keep the motorcycle up. And that's why we don't need a whole bunch of power when we're doing slow speed stuff and U-turns and stuff, because all you need is a little bit of power. It, as soon as it gets power, it wants to stand up. It wants to go straight. That's what it's designed to do. That's what it wants to do. All right? So that being said, no reason for you to have to worry about going fast to do something because it makes you feel more comfortable. I do get that. But the more you practice exercise number two, and then apply it with the handlebars turned, it's gonna make other things so much easier. It's gonna make making right turns and left turns from a stop easier because that initial part, that initial takeoff, that's what gets everybody. Yes, people don't, you know, they don't turn their heads and sometimes they don't turn the handlebars yet, but it's that initial start, that uneasy feeling. This is gonna take care of that. All right, guys? All right, guys, I hope this was helpful for you. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, share. And again, if you wanna be a VI preloader, you know what to do. I already told you, okay? Check the description section. I'm going to put a link in there too. Love you guys. Take care. Remember, 
Spend more time being thankful for the things that you have and less time complaining about the things that you don't. Again, I want to thank my uh, veterans out there. Happy Memorial Day to you all. Um, special shout out to my brothers and sisters in blue. You guys be careful out there. I know you're appreciated. Special shout out to the NYPD Highway Patrol Motorcycle Unit, particularly Highway 1, because that's where I used to work, and the Highway District Motorcycle School, because <laughs> that's, the, that's where I learned how to ride this motorcycle the way I do. I thank them for their patience, because guys, it was rough in the beginning, all right? But remember, this is a perishable skill. You have to keep practicing or you're going to lose parts of it, okay? So I want to tell you guys again, practice, 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 practice. Preload and keep it loaded. Practice, 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 because practice breeds confidence, guys. And a confident rider is a safer rider. Until next time.